music mm. and about it being a, a frowned upon um, occupation and something that is not stable. Mm. And you know what I thought when you said that? The first thing that I thought was, it's funny how the thing that is unstable is the thing that is the most stable thing in terms of it's always there for you. <laughs> it's like, such a big talk. Man. It's... it's it, it's the it's the occupation that you don't respect yeah. that some people yeah. some people may not respect but it's the thing that as always is there for literally everyone you need the television app 24 7 mini documentaries podcasts live shows dj live streams top five subscription packages plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports download it from the app store for free today Fox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Yeah, yeah man. Come on, come on, come Ladies and gentlemen, on. this is the Killer Keller podcast. So you fucking right. We've just been <laughs> having some <laughs> technical issues, but we finally fixed them. Um, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Um, all, area crew, all the regular crew, you know who you are and what you're doing and what you're here for. This is street culture and more. Check out the television app, no mucking about. Without shadow of a doubt, we're here inside the herd with some legacy holders. Mm. And rest, I don't say that shit lightly. These guys have been at it. At it for a very long time and are still pioneering and going for it as if it was like the next day. Yeah. The mighty David Boomer inside the place. Good whoop, to whoop, see you, Mr. Whoop, Keller. Whoop, good good to, see, to see you. And my dog, Navi. Jesus. Navigator inside the yes, place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How Respect. are we? How are we? Really great, man. Yeah, man. Good to see well, you, man. Well. It's been a minute. Yeah. It's been a minute. The great Killer Keller. Yeah. It has like been I've a minute. Got, yeah, I've very fond memories of stuff we've done yeah. here and abroad. Yeah. As one does. He's keeping out of trouble. True, man. He's trying to keep out of trouble. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then some wise guy decides to bring the trouble into, into the house and we're all in here doing okay. it what we're doing yeah. back in the day. Exactly. That's right. You know? 100%, man. 100%. It's, it is a beautiful thing. It's a very different time, but I think it's an adaptability. You've got to discuss, You've got to find your adaptability in these situations, don't you? I think we're. I think we're like veterans at mm. doing that type of thing because, you know, musically, um, when you when you actually are in the music industry, because you know, people that have their jobs and their little trades and professions, mm. Mm. they frown at the music industry and mm. they're like, oh, it's not a real job. Mm. So that being said. Because it's so up and down and unpredictable, you gotta be adaptable, mm. you know. And that's what we've been doing. I mean, I've been doing it for the last four decades, four de you know. 40 and it's years, just like man. forty literally, years. It's like literally, yeah. Literally, like you have gotta be adaptable. As a mm. matter of fact, it's not only just adaptable. You gotta be ahead of the game. You gotta yeah. be looking at, boy, this is popping off now. I need to jump on this ride. What's gonna jumping. be? What's gonna be going on in two years' time? Mm. I need to set. Something. I need to set the precedent. Mm -hmm. I need to be the one that's actually constructing the next thing that's going to happen. That's right. So while you're riding that high, you still got to be have your head on. So even though these times are a little bit, you know, uncertain or whatever, how, however anybody wants to put it, it's not phasing me. No. I'm not saying that there isn't things going on and it's dangerous or whatever. However, whatever perception people have of it, I respect your opinion. Mm. But in our world... It's just another day. It's a, I'm just not phased. You've got to just move and try and shake and mm. wang. <laughs> for those of you uh, that are joining us at a point where you haven't been around for four decades, which is it's, it's absolutely fine, I'll break it down for you. David Boomer, vocalist, lyricist, MC, live host. You've got a thing that is just, it's <laughs> you're, you weave and integrate with the sound. Um, Benny Page, uh, V Recordings, uh, Shy FX, um, and of course your guys' new project, Navigator. Oh my God, like, <laughs> Dub Pistols, Freestylers, Original Junglist, Sound System, 1978. I mean, uh, and, uh, and both very good friends of mine. So, you know, but of course you guys don't all entirely know this. So we need to start from the start, boys. We need to get right in into the nooks and crannies. Of, uh, of, of your beginnings, your humble beginnings. Who wants to start? Who wants to kick off? <laughs> Go on, Boomer. <laughs> tell, tell, them, tell them a general. Tell oh, them. Oh, okay. Um, wow. Um, you know you're in uh, trouble now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, first of all, thank you so much for having us on, on, on your podcast. Salute, like, salute. I'm like really honoured. Yeah, man. Really, salute, really, salute. really honoured, really honoured to, to be invited and, and 
and um, and share, you know what mm. I mean, the experience. Um, and big respect to you, Keller, man, because you've, you've been doing your thing for a minute as well. Don't bother try and go on like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You've been doing your thing for a minute. I've been seeing you shining for a while. Um, Blessings, bro. Um, Thank it, you. Where did, where did it start for me? It started, for me, it started in reggae dancehall mm. um, in terms of my, my, my music. Or if I want to go right back to the very beginnings, it started with Top of the Pops. Top of the Pops. So I'm going to be really honest. As a, as, a, as a little boy, I can remember as young as five, six years old, mm. In front of the television, watching Top of the Pops, mm. Blondie, Sting, that oh, era, yeah, and yeah. and being completely like, that's me. Mm. That's what I want to do yeah. from, you know, from primary school. Um, and then I went to Jamaica um, at, um, at the age of nine and was immersed in reggae dancehall, mm. like completely, you know. So I went from Sting and Blondie to Dennis Brown, Frankie Paul. You know, wow. and, and that kind of genre, that kind of that kind of Sugar sound, Minor, Gregory Sugar Mike, Isaac. Gregory Isaac, you know, John Holt and Johnny Osborne. Johnny Osborne. Mm. So, so that was my thing, and I, I started. You know, I always sang in the school playground. I always used to sing in the school concerts, mm. sing in church, um, and then that became me singing on the dance hall sound systems in Jamaica. Crazy. Um, I love uh, that. I love the way that transition. All yeah. those things that you would like the influences yeah. over here, yeah. taking it over there, and yeah. And then I came back to England um, at the age of 19. So I lived in Jamaica for 10 years um, and was immersed in, you know, that, that whole reggae. Mm. And I would call it the golden era of reggae dance hall as well. You know, yeah. 80s. I was there for the whole of the 80s. Came back here yeah. in the mad, 90s. Mad, mad, mad. Mad. Yeah, so, so, um, so that's my foundation. <laughs> and then after being here for a while, I linked up with a guy called UK Apache and me and him started sparring together. And we sparred for a good, a good stretch of time. Mm. And during that stretch of time, a thing called Jungle was born. Mm -hmm. And that, that changed everything. You know, um, original Nutter, you know. Um, he was right there, sparring with mm -hmm. UK Apache. The main... That's how I, that's when I first seen him. Yeah. When the jungle kind of yeah. boss now, and yeah. UK Apache's doing his thing. Yeah. And um, I remember one time there was this meeting with Sour Records down in, 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 in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And it was like Sour, and it was... Rebel MC was there and Paul Ibeefa and all these people's a big kind of a meeting. Mad. And me see, and I see this guy there and he's like, I saw him walking into the place and he just dressed like a yard man, he mother on him, mother on him, Clark's booty and him, you know, like a weather man, you know, you know the <laughs> style of the Kanga yeah. and him. And I was like looking at this guy like, yeah, that man is straight Jamaican, mm. you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, well, I go on, man. And he's like, yeah, man, respect. And he's like, I don't know this guy. He don't know me, but he just had this connection. Mm. That was the first time I saw him. And from that day, every time I saw him, I was like, yeah, that's that dude, isn't it? Not knowing he was David Boomer. It's just, it's just that. Crazy. That, yeah, Crazy. yeah, that's when I first met him that time. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that Navi mentions that because I mean that, that you know yeah I was at Sour Records when you know when Apache got his, his record deal mm. and the whole thing which with Shy Effects and the whole all of that but I was just there just rolling with mm. Apache because he was my boy. Did Shy Effects original originally did he he remixed the original right? No 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 okay. How did he that? Made all right. It. No no no. He made the original. No, let, let's he made it, the, let's he made the original. The, 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 let's 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 take it a little bit let's before take, the original. Yeah, let's take yeah, it a little bit yeah. before the original. Before the original, there was a track called. Um, Gangster. Gangster Kid. Gangster Kid. And that is the original. Right. Really? There you go. I that knew there was the original. I knew there was a full Gunsmoke. 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 That is yeah. the original. But see, the, but the music, the instrumental that Shy made for that track called mm. Gangster Kid, uh, Apache heard that and said, oh my God, that I would love to do something on that mm. instrumental. So the, our manager at the time, a guy called Sam Carroll, got in touch with Shy and said, listen, I've got this artist called UK Apache. He's heard your stuff. He really likes it. He would like to do a version of Gangster Kid, but his version of Gangster Kid. And that's how that's original Nutter. A, I knew there was a fault line about. somewhere. That's I how knew, original Because these about. things, these, this magic, it, it, it's, it's a slow burn, isn't it? You yes. don't just have it. It's like there's a lot of... Intricate uh, stuff that yeah. happens, and it's like a, almost like an evolution. It does it by yes. itself. Yes. Mm. There's no like you. There's no set format to this thing, mm. especially when you're making hits. Mm. It mm. always just does it by itself somehow. It just formulates by itself. You're mm. like, Damn. okay, mm. just did that, and then the timing's right, and all that shit. And you're just like, yo, this could really kick up, and yeah. you just don't. Yeah. It's that madness of yeah. even music. sometimes you make the track and you think nah, it's all right. Mm. The next thing you know, it's just blown, and you're just like, damn, how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. If only we could bottle it. This is it. We don't know when we're going to have that moment. We don't know when that's going to happen, you know? Mm. 
So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of how, that's how I entered. Well, I, I haven't even really got into how I entered Jungle, but that was, that was kind of like the doorway to it because Apache was now working with Shy mm. and that was a thing and they were touring all over the world and all the rest of it. And Apache said to Shy, you should do a tune with my boy Boomer because trust me, it's, he's bad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So next thing I know, I'm in the studio with Shy. I did a track called Who Run Things with Shy and um, it popped off. It went mm. straight to number, it went to number two on the, on the, um, the day it was released. And then by the next week, it was number one. Crazy. And that was my first number one in Jungle. That was my first number one in anything. Uh, and then Legacy. obviously- Legacy. <laughs> that was 1995. Mm. And then uh, lots, of ha lots, of, lo lots of stuff happened in the, in the middle of that. I've had my 17th number one in the underground just last year. So I've, I've, I've done a bit. Amazing. And on that journey, I met this guy. And I have to, I have to, I have to mention this because um, he was one of the only, and I will say that unreservedly, he was one of the only who I would consider at the time top hmm. jungle MC. He was a top boy. Nasty MC. He was a yeah. top boy in the jungle 100%. team on Cool FM. When Cool FM came cool into FM, a jungle yeah. dance with their Cool FM jackets, the waves mm. parted. Everybody just moved out of the way. <laughs> Everybody just moved out of the way. And he, and he was one of them, man, right? And I was just some guy that was beside UK Apache. Mm. I wasn't nobody. People didn't really know who I was or anything like that. He would never walk past me without mm. hailing me up. Stopping Not and saying, in my opinion, you weren't. He, he would never walk guy. past me. Mm. You know, but people didn't know who I was. I have to say this as well. People didn't know who I was because a lot of the times I wasn't mentioned, my name wasn't mentioned, my name wasn't put on records or whatever. So all they people had was yeah. a voice and no no face and no name. And Which is criminal know. when you think of it, especially back then. You know, think about the, yeah. all those records uh, that you love the vocals to and you just can't yeah. remember. Who did it? Even I didn't know who he was. Mm. Most people but, didn't. But yeah. I'm an energy man, innit? I work mm. off of energy and vibration. And for yeah. the first time I seen this man, because I come from sound system too, and mm. I come from that reggae background, and he's just got one of those voices that's just sounded like one of those distinctive, Gee. you know, the 80s voices, Gee. the people like the Trilly use, the Sanchez's, the, the, the Barrington Levy's, all of them classic, classic singers, yeah. Liko John, you know, he's, he's got that, mm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? He had that, he had that, that frequency, it's a, yeah, you know? It's, it's, it's all that time. Like, mm. so, and I'm not even knowing that it was this guy, but like, every time I saw him, it was like, yeah, we have some magia and whatever, you know, what I go on me done and, yeah man, what I go on me done and, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And so every time I see him, I'm just like, straight, yeah man. Mm. Regardless of we going through and, you know, we parted the Red Sea yeah. like Moses, mm -hmm. it's not, it's, I don't care. <laughs> you know, when I see that guy, I'm going to hail him because I've mm. got this affinity with him because I'm feeling his energy and that was what attracted me to Buma, but mm. I didn't even know who he was. Energy's really? everything. Energy's yes. everything, man. Yeah, energy 100%. Like anyone that, dude, you can smell bad energy from the moment you walk into a room. That's me. Energy, yeah. That's feel me, you can 100%. Feel it. I work off of energy. I mm. don't have to know you. I walk into a room and I can almost feel you from yeah. over, the, over there. I just yeah. can see everybody and feel it. And you just know, all right, now that's loud. Mm. Or, yeah, yeah, that, you know, yeah. same thing, you know. So, yeah, that's, that's, how, that's how me and him kind of linked. So, I never knew who he was and it wasn't until... 15 years after that <laughs> I get a message and he's like yo I want you on my album so mm. I'm not I've, uh, now I've heard the name David mm. Boomer but I'm not linking it to him mm. and his face I'm just thinking yeah David Boomer wants to make a track with me <laughs> that's crazy that's crazy <laughs> yeah. and then we link and I'm like oh you. are you <laughs> And since that, 2010, that's my brother. Because we had that affinity from, from 25 years ago. You know, I've known this man 27 yeah, years. Mad right? fate. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. Anyone that says that shit ain't true is just... It's, it's real. It's real, that's man. You know, it's real. It's not something that, that you can make up. But now, have you ever always, you know, the times we've met, knowing mm. you, mm. and particularly in those environments where it'd be all too easy to be an a alter ego or an alias or a personified amplified five times the size and stature you you go on stage and you slam it but you've always been navvy like always be do you know what i'm saying you got your sasha fierce when you jump on the stage mm. but let's but you're still like 
You know what I mean? You, you deal on some... We was having a conversation today where, you know, you know, your name's Lee, for instance. His name's David. My name's Ray, mm -hmm. right? And that's our given name for my parents. But really and truthfully, you are Killer Killer. Mm -hmm. He is David Boomer and I am Navigator mm -hmm. because that is naturally who we are. And then we've created this, this persona yeah. and this alter ego yeah. that we've actually we can make money out of. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah. If you're in control of, if you don't let it get to your head mm -hmm. and you just feed into that special talent that you have and that energy that you have, mm -hmm. yeah. that's actually who you are. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you're yes. trying to be. And the people that are trying to be that, it naturally just looks like you're trying to. Trying to. Yes. You know, but somebody who goes up there and does it naturally and you can just see like... This dude was born to do it. Every ounce of them is just like... It, it just clicks in and, and mm -hmm. that's naturally who you... That's, I mean, yes. that is my yes. personal perception of, of how I see that. And there's certain people, when I see them on the decks or I see them on the mic or mm -hmm. I hear them singing or even if I see them doing some karate or they're dancing or whatever, you're just like, he's a bad man. Mm -hmm. like that. He, you know, he's special. Yeah. Special. People like that. Um, I, I know they can come from anywhere. But there is a certain temperament in a person that needs it. It's like it's like a um, a yearn. It's like you can see that it's either this or nothing. Yeah, it's almost okay. like a it's almost like a drug. Mm. Um, I can I can I can remember being Fight on the flight. stage. Yeah, man, I can remember being on the stage at. at Glastonbury in 1999 with freestylers, me, Tana Fly, Aston, all the boys, then a couple of breaks. That was a bad boy set too, by the way. Bro, there's 30,000 people and I went on the stage and I was like, this one is I want it. And the crowd just went, Whoa. and when I just stood up there looking at the crowd, I was like, this mm. is it. Mm. No weed, mm. no alcohol, no girl, mm. nothing feels like this mm. this is like it this is the whole vibe and you just could feel it just literally going through mm. your body and the, the goosebumps man and i was like this is the whole thing just this talking the the amount of experience right here boy i you know, know that feeling and now i can actually feel it through the camera mm. like if i'm doing a live stream the other day i was doing a live stream with ray keith and i'll talk ray keith oh, oh my god hold tight hold, hold tight my ray brother keith. ray salute Big man, he bust this mix, yeah, and I literally just started brocking out. And every time the beat come in, the doom, da, doom, da, 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 doom, yeah, da, yeah. and then the doom, da, da, and I'm doing the little MC thing, and then as soon as the beat drop it, the girl just stop MC and I start skanking to the thing. Like he literally, I was gone. I was gone with him, and it's just like that same feeling of Again, yeah. that same feeling of the 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 the, the Goosebumps, mm. bro. Like you're literally your whole body, you're overcome by the, mm. <laughs> the whole energy of the thing. That that is for me yeah. like where it's where it's at. Ray, you know? Ray Shy, Jumping Jack Frost, of course, Goldie. Yeah. There's a yeah. There's a the, the newest guy that does that to me is Voltage. Hold Voltage, tight, Voltage. Like, <laughs> I've been in dances <laughs> with that guy. <laughs> no, dude, this dude, yeah. God. Nah, man. No, no. Yeah. Nah. I've seen him literally just brock up. The, I've seen yeah. all the vets at the back of the dance and every tune he played, they're just running over, rewinding. Mm -hmm. I can't even play the set because it's just too much. <laughs> Voltage, no. There's another, another. Yeah, like the Bristol another crew. Heavy. Yes. Yeah, man, big up all the, big up all the Bristol crew the as day, well. We love them, man. Yeah. Love Waving them, them flags. Yeah, big, like big up Born on Road. Mm. God, big up Born on Aries. Road. Aries. Mm. Um, Kelvin373. J-Man. J-Man, Stivs. Gold yeah. Dubs. Gold Dubs. Oh, man. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's mm. a heavy crew right there. If you don't know about Born on Road, you need to go check out Born yeah, on Road. Get, the, get the intel. You get it here they're first. They're things right now. Man, I love it when you go into a rave and you're... I don't know what mood you've got to be in as a punter. You've got to be led by the DJ. But once they caught you, yo, music's dangerous. Because that can be, have you doing whatever you, it tells you to. It's funny that you, I mean, you, you guys mentioned something uh, just at the beginning of the interview about music mm. and about it being a, a frowned upon um, occupation and something that is not stable. Mm. And you know what I thought when you said that? The first thing that I thought was, it's funny how the thing that is unstable is the thing that is the most stable thing in terms of it's always there for you. It's like such a big talk. Man. It's it's 
it, it's the it's the occupation that you don't respect yeah. that some people yeah. some people may not respect, but it's the thing that as always is there for literally everyone. Yeah. Wow, wow. What is not stable wow. is the most stable thing in your life, or one of always there for you. Always there for you. Music but is to always add there. to that. I would say that music is my sanctuary. Every time my life went off key. Or I felt like, oh, I'm not doing this no more. I've got some big haters and the people are fighting me down. I'm not getting the respect that I need. And I was like, oh, I'm not doing this no more. I'm going to go do this now. Then I go off key, go and do some madness, mm. end up in a bag of crap, mm. and then decide, all right, all right, maybe. And then the, the music's just calling me back. And then as soon as I come back to the music, my life just gets back on track again. Mm. And I'm doing it. I start making money and I'm starting to do the things. Mm. that, I, And I feel good in my emotions. Right. And music literally has been my sanctuary mm. for 41 years, like since I left school in 1979. You know what's, what your I mean? what's your first um, sound system? I Who joined, I, when, I, when I was at school, I can remember like when I was a kid, we used to have these ghetto blasters. Mm -hmm. And everybody used to have this JVC, I can't remember what it was called, but it was a pretty square one, square ghetto blaster. Mm -hmm. And it had a, uh, it had a, uh, um, had the flip, the flip cassette thing oh, used yeah. to come out at the front. I, but I never liked that one. I liked the crown one. The crown one had the, when it flipped out, it just come out cushioned mm. really slow. And it had, it had a, a bass booster button on it. And it had... The Mandatory double, bass booster and button. And two cassette, two cassette <laughs> decks in it. So you could run, you could, you could Copy. dub off. You yeah, could yeah. It also had a button on it where you could, you could double fast. Speed, speed, yeah, up, speed, speed, speed up. Industry speed hated up. that shit so right? bad. Yeah. So anyway, this was the, and this and he had a mic. He had a mic in input. Damn, so it's a cold, the, cold it was buff. a cold piece of thing, man. Mm. And I was so little bit. It was like the, this 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 thing was bigger than me. Mm. Like I'd be walking down the road and man say, Yo, I mind you get robbed, you know, because you can't even defend that. Me, I'm walking down the road, this big thing over my shoulder, and I used to go to the youth centers and I used to just like plug my mic in and just play reggae music and just MC over it. Mm. And uh, I think I was talking to my mother the other day. I was like, yeah, you know, I've been doing this like 40 years. And she was like, which 40 years? You've been doing about 45 years. I can remember when you was doing this in your bedroom and I used to be telling you to shut up. You're making too much noise up there and everything. So you're telling me 40 years, but I'm telling mm. you you've been doing it since you was this age. So literally the first sound system that I joined after doing that in youth centers, a guy put a dance on one day and he was like, look, we're going to book a sound. And it was a youth man sound from Walthamstow, E17, mm. called Intruder. And it was a set of guys, one guy called Paul Bacchus had this sound and um, I remember I used to just go around the sound and kind of just chat on the sound um, and then one time they got a booking in Hackney in a place called Holly Street Community Centre mm -hmm. and um, they there was a big big hall and they never had enough boxes speaker boxes to cover it so they borrowed some boxes from another sound from Tottenham called Phase One right um, and this was a Friday night session with a sound called Surge most of the people in there you're most probably watching this don't know. I bet you there's a couple of old heads that know about Surge. Trust me, the comments, yeah. you, yeah, we'll keep the comments Surge, up, man. Surge, telling in, you. Indian Thomas, one Indian Guyanese guy, Indian, straight here, looked like an Indian, but he's a West <laughs> Indian guy and he had a sound. Um, and there was another sound in there called Black Sapphire. And they used to play every week and they used to have guest sounds. So this intruder now, they got booked for this dance. And um, so I went there to go on MC. Remembering this is reggae music. Yeah, this has got nothing to do with jungle. Jungle wasn't even about yet. Mm -hmm. Hip hop is just about now mm -hmm. gonna mm -hmm. bust. Like, you know what I mean? Rapper's Delight in 79 is just coming. So it's either rock music, classical, or pop. Yeah, pop or reggae. Or that reggae. That was it. Yeah, before, reggae. Um, and before that, and if you wanna talk about where I come from, I come from my dad's record collection, which was Scar. Blue Beat and Rocksteady. And if you don't know about that, just put it in Google and all the tracks will come up. You know, mm. then you're going to know about Desmond Decker and Prince Buster Ooh. and all these people. Prince Allah. That's who I grew yeah, up Yeah, please, on. listen, when if you do When I was a teenager, not, then... it went into dub music where you start talking about scientists and mm. Lee Scratch Perry and Ooh. King Tubbies yes. and all of these. Like, we used to literally buy them records and then you've got all the scientists and you've got Fat Man and, you know, Coxon and all them. So they used to actually have Clash albums. Greensleeves was a big label them times there. It's Quite actually made when you think. Far right. It's mad when you think. Like a lot of the, like we're talking dub and, you know, and there's just lovers rock and all these different genres mm. within one umbrella. Mm. Within one. It's my youth. Like literally, yeah. that was my youth. It's crazy. Yeah. You know how, much, how much music nowadays, especially our sub genres and that, like, 
have actually lent heavily on the influences of those trends that were in reggae. That, of that, that alone. The I'm genres within this that. little bit here. Yeah, do it, do it. We will get, yeah, about, do it. About Intruder. So anyway, I've turned up at this dance. The guy who owns the sound, Intruder, is sitting at the back, not playing the sound. <gasps> so I've come in, there's this guy on the ting. His name was Ryan Specialist. I didn't know that at the time, but he's in there, he's doing the ting and he's playing the sound. So I've walked in and I've gone to the man, them, who's that? So they're like, oh, his name's Ryan. So I see Paul sitting at the back. I'm like, why, is, why isn't he playing the sound? They're like, well, he borrow some box, but he can't play the sound because he, he's scared, so he's going to blow the box them. So I said, what do you mean? He's like, he's scared, he's going he's gonna to overblow, he's going to blow the box and he's going to have to pay for it. So I said, so can I, can I still get on the mic? I said, yeah, it's, it's Intruder, you can, you can play, we just, you just borrow the box him. So no, I get on the mic, smash the first little round, did my little thing. So the next MC from Phase One, his name was Roland G, salute, salute. That's, mm -hmm. my, that's my general, mm -hmm. Roland G. Yeah, Festa Sairi, big up yourself. Yeah, I'm a general like you, and you know that. You teach me how to sing, you teach me how to harmonize. You looked after me as a you, and I'll never forget that king, yeah? And um, he heard me chatting, and he just came up next to me and said, yo, you, you're good, you know? He said, the next round, after them lot play, yeah, I'm gonna come in and DJ with you. So we start DJing together now, because right? remember, you, most, most, nowadays you look called DJ the guy that mm. plays on the decks, we call that selector. And back in the day, the MC was actually the DJ. We said the DJ, a DJ upon the mm. mic. Even up to now, if you go to Jamaica and say, yo, me DJ, that means that the guy was, yeah, Doing the on the day. microphone. Whoa, right? there you go, knowledge, there you go. So anyway, <laughs> um, that was pretty much the start of my career. And then after that dance, I was like, no disrespect, but Intruder's not the one. Phase one is the one. Mm -hmm. I just rolled with them guys and they literally just embraced me and that was the start, insane. Of, start of my career. <laughs> Going back to what you was just saying about the owing to reggae, it's funny. Yesterday I was watching an interview with, with Buster Rhymes, yeah? Yeah, original Buster Rhymes, one of my favorite Oh, rappers. one of my favorites ever. Yeah. And under As a matter of fact, my two, my two favorite rappers is Buster Rhymes and Biggie Smalls. And you can all say what you want to say about whatever rappers. I love loads and loads of rappers, but you see them two there, mm. They just got something special about them, their voices, their swag, the, 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 the way how they can just the, put the rhymes together, the, the yeah. mad thing, right? So, and he was saying, yo, he's like, not only is it just Cool Herc that invented the whole hip hop thing, he said, you have to give it to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Jamaica, the islands. He said, you got all the islands, brrr, yeah. right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to find that and I'm going to put it up on my Instagram you have on to. Thursday because. For me, the way how we broke that down, it was, it was deep. Remembering that my father is a Jamaican man that came to this country in England mm. in the late 50s, met my mother, got married to her, I'm his first son. And so I grow in a very deep Jamaican culture in the UK. And you have to understand, I'm born in the 60s, so at that time, black and white relationships were very, very frowned mm -hmm, upon. Mm -hmm. And mixed race people like myself, especially light skinned like I am, were very frowned upon. You said we weren't accepted. Hmm. As a matter of fact, the whole of my mom's family just cut her off completely because she no married a black man. Yeah. No way. So I don't even know that side of my family. You understand? Oh, I just wow. grew amongst black people. So this is a thing that people have to understand. And you still don't know your family from that side? Them. I don't know them. I know the whole of the black side though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't yeah. know all of the Jamaicans. And it's the same thing with, with Buma. When I got to 25, I literally was like, I need to go and see where I come from. Because mm. remembering, coming up in the sound system world, then joining phase one, then around, this was in 1980, mm. when I joined a big sound. I moved from Wolfenstow to Tottenham now, and I'm chatting on this sound. And it's a house party sound. And it's like you say, it was Lover's Rock, mm. which Lover's Rock was the first kind of UK genre that yeah. kind of boss on a reggae thing. Yeah. Um, so you had punk, lovers, rock, and then I would say jungle was the next big thing after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know the, the, the punk punk rock was literally coming from a ska perspective, which mm. is the same thing Pretty again. Much, yeah. What did you? What was your take on punk? Because obviously you were in the mix at that time. What was the what was the vibe punk for you? Did you enjoy? It? Did, when did I you was dig at it? school, it was it was literally you know Sid Vicious, you yeah. know Sex Pistols, you know what I mean? Yeah. And them tunes that I've been going out with a girl, her <laughs> name, you know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? And, and the key for the UK, yeah. and, 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 and spitting at the mic and all of that, like, 
That was lit. I don't need to like, you need to go, go put sex pistols into the Yeah, it's another one. Tip. You know, that's another wormhole, trust me. <laughs> it's like, you got, like, really, the, all of that came from the same West Indian culture. Yeah. Of yeah. these people coming up here, like West Indian, especially Jamaican culture. And I'm not saying it just because I'm of West Indian orientation. I'm just saying that, like, this little tiny island in the Caribbean is like the world, such man. an incredibly influential mm. place. Um, so anyway, words. coming back to my story, which was I was on phase one in 1980. I left that sound around 1982, 83. And I joined another sound called First Choice, who were originally a dub sound called Black Star Liner. Mm -hmm. Salute Leo and um, oh, Otis, man. Big up yourself, yeah? Another one of my... One of my, the first people then was like, yo, this little brown skin boy, I look already you to come. You know what I mean? Yeah. And help to, to push up Otis, Senator. Hold tight, Otis. Pick up yourself, yeah. Yo, then I left that Big sound. shout outs going on right now, hold yeah. tight. And then I joined First Choice, which was originally a dub sound called Black Star Liner. And I was mm -hmm. on that sound for two years. And then after that, I met a guy called Mikey Crucial, who was on Fat Man. Now, Fat Man was like the cornerstone Godfather sound in Tottenham. So by 1985, end of 84, going into 85, I'm on Fat Man Sound. That's crazy. You went from... Doo, 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 you were like Lily Within Padley. five years, I went from a small party sound to mm. the biggest sound in Tottenham. You know what? Five years. The Ragged Twins say the same thing. I, it feels like, to me, like that period... I mean, it was special. Yeah, man. man. Ragged Twins, all right. Dima Rockers. I met Dima Rockers in mm. 1983 a little session on a Tuesday night. It was called Lecture Hall and mm. it used to run from 7 until 12. And imagine it's on a Tuesday night, yeah? And I was in there what? and this guy comes in there and him start DJ upon the mic. And I'm looking at this guy. Remember, I've, been, I've got a little name already before him and he's like, this are the meaning, the meaning, the maracas are the meaning, the meaning. I was like, the meaning for this and me said that and that, that. And the meaning for this and this. And I'm like, yo, who's this guy? The wheel come again, the crowd going popping off. Demon Rockers. Demon Rockers, you know what I mean? Mad. So I've known Demon Rockers 38 years. And his brother, Flinty, used to come to the dance. Them lot were still going to school. They literally used to come in the dance and take off their school uniform and put it in their bag and put on the, the thing. I love just, them. I love like, them. They're also they're for real. Just my favourite people. Their energy, man. They're they're energy, they're they're like, me and them, man, they've been like this, yeah. seriously, for 30 years. Oh, they were six. talking nothing but love. Yeah, I'm on on the 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 that's like yeah. they're my, they're my G. So talk okay, so then after being on Fat Man for a year and a half, yeah. there was a lot of maneuvering in between all the MCs at that time and maneuvering went along and then all of a sudden I just get head headhunted and the next thing I know I'm on Unity with D Man and Crazy. Flinty, right? Um after knowing them and getting along with them, then Mad. at the end of eighty five, I literally until about eighty eight, me and them man there, me, D Man and Flinty were like the top of top boys, them top in top North boys, East yeah. London, and we just smashed it. For sure. Dead. 1987, we won Best Sound System in, um, so that's going to be my first ever, like, winning anything, like, of a huge proportion. Seven that's years into mad. my career, we won Best Sound System in the UK on Black Echoes. So, you know, like, what Mix Mag is now, mm. that's, what that's what the Black, Black Echoes, Echoes was. was back then for reggae. Wow. And so we wow. won Best Sound System in that in 1987. And in 1988, I was like, right, I need to go to Jamaica i go and find who I am. Mm. And I went there and I spent six months. You hit the, did you hit like a, you, you hit um, your, 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 uh, your ceiling and you wanted yeah, more? Yeah, did, did, most definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. I felt like I can't do anything more in sound system. It, looked, it felt like the only way from there was down. Down and you didn't want to do that. So. Because there was a lot of manoeuvring going on at that stage where... People were in studios recording and we weren't getting the bly in the studio. We, nobody weren't saying, yeah, come to the studio. Or I'd go to the studio. I'd literally sit there for five hours writing my lyrics, having everything ready to go. Mm. And then the man would say, boy. Say Shandon. Say Shandon, you know, you have to come tomorrow. And then I'll come tomorrow, see him thing again. Boy, you know, I'll make it today. You know, you have to go come again tomorrow. Oh, and then after that, five dude. days of that, I was like, yo. Me mm. not come tomorrow. Mm. No more tomorrow mm. thing. Me I forgot cut no oh. one thing, no one. You know what I mean? That so I started. Shit, that <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I have to give thanks for that because that's what forced me to go and carve my Push. own path. It's kind of tough love, isn't it? You've got to experience that. But, but yeah, I think back in the day, 
there was no internet. We had cassette tapes, you know. We mm. were famous all over U the UK mm. and actually in New York, Miami and Jamaica. Did Germany embrace it? Germany are pretty good with... I don't know if we were big then. Germany, I, Germany for me, blew up in 1995 when we were doing Jungle and then mm. I started MCing on a party called Meditation and that just went like... I Bunkers. was literally the first resident MC mm. to be doing that in Germany and... Now I speak fluent German and I've mm. lived in Germany and, you know, Germany's like another one of my second homes, mm. you know. It's a saying? lovely place. I do love Germany. Big Hamburg fan, me. Yeah, I lived in Berlin for 10 years mm. and um, studied German and did a sound engineering yeah. diploma over there and, and did a, quite a lot of studying and, and lived there and got into the German way of life. And so I understand the culture now mm -hmm. completely. And German people are some of the kindest people I've ever met. They mm -hmm. helped me so much. I know people are like, why are you going to Germany? They're Nazis. I was like, have you ever lived in Germany? Have you been to Germany? Mm. Do you did like you just you're hearing about World War One? Yeah. yeah. Mm. But that time when I went to Jamaica for that six months, it literally changed me as a man. Mm -hmm. And I came back to England, and I was like, right, with no disrespect. Obviously, sound system is my origination. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't the way how I saw the evolution of the artist yeah. that was to become yeah. as navigator. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to England, I was like, right, kind of, I'm gonna have to just give Sound System a miss and look for this next avenue. And it was D Man and Flinty again that came back to me in eighty nine, ninety, and said to me, "Yo, we're doing this thing called Acid House." I was like, what? Yo. And then the next thing I know, I seen them on top of the pops, bro. And they're mm -hmm. like, Raga Twins, they're both. Doom, 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 doom. Raga Twins, they're both. They've and always been charted. quick. They've always been quick on the up. And they, they've they, always... They, they, they was always ahead of the game. They were. And, they, were. Like, and then they were like, Navi, you need to start coming to these dances with us, blood God. This is popping off. Mm. I'm money I make. Because even time when we was on Sound City, we're not really making, making no money. We're doing it for the love. Mm. But I will say this. Since all this stuff that's been going on lately, it's actually reminded me of why I got back into music. Why, I'm sorry, why I got into music in the first place. We never did this for money, man. Mm. We did this for the vibe and just to let the frequency off in the microphone. Mm. And it was a release. And that's what it's come back to being Yo, for me again now. For real. You know? You know, all of a sudden, DJs are playing the selection and the music that they secretly wanted to play in the clubs, but... Now Couldn't got... because it's so governed by mm. this program thing. Yeah, or there's a Karen in front of the deck saying, no, I want, you know, so and so and so and so. And they don't want to play it, but they're going to have to because Karen wants it. It's that kind of scenario, isn't it? And it's the one that you have to, that's what you get paid for. Mm. But when you ain't got no money, like you say, it's... Because when no money is there, like that, that set I did with, with, I did a set the other day as well with Groove Rider in um, Brixton Jam. And it was just us in there and we were doing a live stream. You know, and he was just busting out the tunes because, you know, for me, Ryder, Ryder oh, I love is him. the supreme king That's of this guy. thing. You know, regardless of what's going on now, back in the day I've when always, I always first come into jung Jungle, Groove Ryder, the king. Mm, all day. He was the king, yeah, of everything. He would get the last set. Like back in the day, you played the last set of the dance, that was prestigious. Mm -hmm. The Don played the last set. And it would take you on a journey. Mm. Like it would be literally, I'd be mesmerized in there like, wow, mm. this is amazing. Groove Rider is just so the governor. When the, big up yourself, Groove Rider. Mm. Come here, I tell you this, when he takes you on a journey, there's no other man. You know, when you start digging that box and start drawing beats, you know. Mm -hmm. No, when he's on his thing, you you know. Yeah, you don't know. You don't. You need hear this MC. groove. You don't need an MC up there backing Yo. him. You don't need nothing. You just listen beat, and he knows how to draw the beat. Then when he blend the next thing in, and you hear the thing, and then the drop come, and he's not no drop like, you know, no, no, it's not like that. Bro. Never that. He's just got this blend all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, this thing, this B line will drop in, or this thing will drop in, and you just be like, oh my. God, bro. Yeah. Why, how did you do? You're like, yo, yeah. and then and again, just highlighting kind of what I said earlier, and it's just like that's where music becomes dangerous because it grabs people, mm. it make it turns them, it, it, it frees them. them. Yeah, pick up the roast man them. them as well because you see roast, 
roast, like Sunday roast, that was the literally the epitome of what jungle, jungle. was, of the birth of jungle for me. Because when I used to go to them parties, turn meals, and, 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 and Linford Studios, before we went to Astoria, mm. like turn meals, I went there a couple of times and then Linford Studios kicked in Sunday night. You go there about nine o'clock, it'll finish at two in the morning. And literally, that was it. That was like literally all of the tunes, them as they were coming out and they were being born, mm. that's where you'd hear, hear them. It. Mm. And I have to big up Paradise A Wall as well, because that was another place. First time I ever heard helicopter tune was Mickey Finn. Mm. Eight o'clock in the morning, like literally ten rewinds, right? Like, every time the tune dropped, every time oh, that beeline kicked the best in. Ones. And it was just like Goldie used to be in there. We were just nobody mm. never knew there wasn't nothing about no who's bigger than who or nothing. It was just the music just and the and the and the vibe and the there's nothing like that. Like obviously I would say reggae is my first love and it, and it will mm. always be my last. But that whole special um, evolution of jungle yeah. music. Golden era. Yeah. Special place. You know, her first hearing Who Run Things. Mm. This whole, that whole thing of like, just before it merged into drum and bass, mm. like from, because I was there with, as I said, Raga Twins. Mm -hmm. They brought me there. So it was Acid House. Like literally, I caught the end of Acid House. Then it went into this hardcore period and then Jungle started. Yeah, it went into the kind of rave hardcore I didn't thing. like none of that. I didn't like that. I wasn't house into stuff. it. It was all bleepy. I didn't yeah. like the hard tunes. Yeah. Cool, mm -hmm. but not really my thing because I come from reggae. But as soon as the jungle kicked in, the soul, and I heard mm -hmm. soul, me, yeah, yeah. and it's like do, 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 that reggae bass line. Come bass line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In amens. Yeah. Mad. Oh. Shout to, shout to Remark. You mentioned Amens. I have to, I have to mention Remark. Remark salute salute to my brother Remark. Oh, the man. Amen Don. The Amen <laughs> King. Lenny Diaz. Big up yourself. Guy called Gerald. Guy called Gerald. All 28 gone okay. bad watch. Mm. Pioneer. Do, 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 do. Gerald on, is man. so unsung in the tapestry. Straight, straight pioneer, man. Yeah. Man, they, they, man, they literally brought that element into in. the thing where I we grew on these music and these voices so right. we knew exactly who that was mm -hmm. when you say all 28 gone boy yeah. but we know all 28 gone bad boy we know that's Ninja Man this is the thing and it's the same with you know the, the whole sample game and the, the, the use of other tunes this is what this is the connective DNA of, of your childhood of, of, your, of a whole genre being literally endorsed by another it's just all these I was 30 crazy. When, when Jungle Bus and I felt like I was 14 again because yeah. all of the music that I used to listen to as a teenager yeah. would came Just back in, in, the, them. in the jungle. Mm. So you're 30 years of age jumping around the place like a 16-year-old because it's like, yeah. <laughs> allow me to tell you, sir. Yeah, because it's brought you back to your childhood. Yeah. It's literally brought you back. Mm. You know I, mean? I think that's what's kept us young and so motivated and inspired all of these years is always having that connection with source. Mm. You know, the source energy, source frequency, mm. that same thing I'm talking about, walking into a room and just hearing that music and going, yes. Yeah. Or that seeing that person, I'm going, yeah. Or hearing him sing, I go, oh my God, that just reminds you know, me of. Yeah. But it's up to the time. Mm. It's up to the time. So mm. now we're listening to things, I don't know, maybe a, a Ben Snow tune with Bad Boys, Bad Boys. And then the thing caps in, then in the beat drops in. That's just the best. Come on, bro, you know. <laughs> the best. Or, you know, whoever, like, you know, as I said, Voltage is another mm. one. Like, yeah. you just got, the, they got that yeah. energy about them. Mm. And you can tell that they come from some kind of sound system-y, yeah. reggae kind of a background because yeah. they, because the that music. Just doesn't happen like that. No, does they, cap it? they capture it. They capture it. Mm. And it's a beautiful thing. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? You said something interesting. I, I have to bring this up because it resonated with me on a couple of levels. You said, I, I mean, I'd be paraphrasing if I, if I was specific on what mm. you'd said, but it was alluding to the fact that um, the, the, the lockdown, COVID, mm. has reset the 100%. playing field for a lot of people. Yes. And you felt like that, Back in the day, you felt that there was an alienation of the ragga, the reggae, mm. the ragga sound in jungle mm. as it was turning into drum bass. You yeah. felt like there was there was a shun. Yeah, hundred percent. And now with 
COVID, yeah, we, there's an indefinite. So, I mean, people are going to be watching this and like, they're, they're going to call it, yeah, we're now talking about BC before COVID. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, I like it. <laughs> but, but this shit really did happen, right? Mm. And uh, yeah, there's remnants of that right now. There is this thing where everyone's panicking and having a, an absolute sweat. But uh, I, I kind of feel you because with beatboxing and its naughty factor, it was all, it was there was with a beatboxer at the time that I was beatboxing. There was quite a, there was an understandable level of cue jumping because all of a sudden you're more than just a hype man because you can beatbox as well. But then that would come back eventually as been like, well, yeah, but that's just a beatbox guy, and you get kind of put back into a box, you know what I mean, so to speak. So I kind of have mm. been where you're at, and yeah. I and I do appreciate the value when you say. Now it's a level playing field. How, how how fast can you swim now? This is it. Like, you know, hello, everybody. Reality kicked in all of a sudden, yeah? My thing is this, yeah? You cannot be certain when you wake up tomorrow that you're going to flick that switch and electricity is going to be there. This is what COVID has taught us now. Mm. I've been saying this for years. You cannot be certain that you're going to switch, turn your that gas thing on the cooker and gas is going to be there. You're not sure if you're going to turn the tap on and there's going to be water there because we take these things for granted. Now, when I went to Jamaica and I, I didn't go on no holiday in no hotel. He's lived it mm. up in the mountain, mm. tending to sheep, goat, chicken, yeah, yeah, yeah. pig, Pick Aki off a tree, pick this, that, 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 you know, yeah. that's where Real I come shit. from, yeah. yeah? Literally. So when you're in the ghetto and you don't have running water, how do you bathe in the morning? If you ain't carry water from where it water you is up in the day, you're yeah. not bathing, you're not cooking, you're not doing nothing. And if you do have a tap, normally it's one tap and you have a little piece of corrugated iron or zinc and you stand up in there with a hose pipe. Mm. Cold water, no, no hot water, freezing cold water. But because it's such a hot temperature, after a while, the water around the kind of kind of lukewarm. Mm. But you get used to that life, and you get out there and you bathe, and you put your clothes on in the morning, and you go about your business, and it's normal. Mm. But somebody from England who's not used to that going out there, they would be horrified. Horrified, yeah. So what I'm saying is, is this: this thing has brought a reality about that's making everybody understand what the actual elements are. Mm. You know, this is base rate now. You've gone right down to grassroots level. Mm -hmm. And yep. in terms of frequency and source, source energy, it reminded me of why I got into music in the first place because I never got into music to make money. I used to have my nine to five job. I could go and buy my little jaw. I mm. could go in a dance and, and buy a drink, yeah? And I had, I'd go to the shop and go and buy my clothes from my nine to five job. Mm, mm, mm. But when I went into that dance, it wasn't about trying to be the top, top of Don. It was about show and prove now. Mm. You've got to get on the microphone. How Chris can I chat my lyrics? How good are my lyrics? Mm. How good is my flow? How am I projecting my voice into, allow me to tell you, how you got, because them times when we was on sound system back in the 70s and the 80s, it was hostile. Mm. You had some bad man from Jamaica and some old Rasta man in there and some, some man from Frontline. Places like Sanginum Road and Railton Road, Brixton and, and Stonebridge. Shit me, man. Bro, you Whoa. get your head boss with mm. a bottle if you ain't spitting the if right thing. Right. Right. Hey, boy, where you at up on it? Hey, boy, come off of it. Literally, I'm not boy, even like, this is no word me, of a lie. So that's how we came up in the thing. And just like this whole thing now, it's like the whole money thing's come out of it mm. now. What are you doing it for? Are you doing it to enjoy what you do? Yeah, show your skills almost now. Are you, are, are you doing it on the levels of, yeah, this is the thing or not? Yeah. Or are you doing it because, uh, okay, another thing is, is who stopped doing it? Who stopped pushing? Who's mm. gone quiet? Oh, because you're not making money no more. You're sitting there going, boy, I mean, the MDG, blah, blah. I'm mm. just waiting until this thing comes back around and I'm going to just start earning my money. Mate, it's not that anymore, bro. The game's over. It's changed and it's changed for good. It's, mm. This ain't going to go back to what it was before. Yeah. This is literally a whole different yeah. phase. And the quicker people come out of the denial, yeah. 
and accept the facts is the more you can get on with your life and start to recreate and, and reset your thing because yeah. this is this is a reset. Do yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, for real. Um, it, uh, pff, this is my opinion. I'm not trying to force my opinion on anybody. All I'm saying is, is I've been on in, on several streams where I've had DJs playing ridiculous sets, mixing music in different ways that you know you would not have heard in a party mm. because in the party the thing was just governed a certain way. So you go in the dance, you're just hearing the same tunes. Every single DJ comes on and plays that same type of yeah. tune. It's formatted yeah. a certain... Am I telling lies, sir? No, not at all, man. It's, it's, it's actually quite annoying. Hmm. But, you know... Um, That's all gone out the window now yeah. because of what's Never happening right now. And I don't even think it's even COVID so much. I think there's a, there's a this deeper than just COVID. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. what are you really... What is your life? What, are you, what do you really... What's going on, man? Where's where's the whole? There's a lot more to it. That's right. Where's your energy? What's 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 your energy? What's, because the, your energy, the energy is speaking differently now. Yeah. How are we tapping into this energy? How do you actually interpret music? Mm. Yeah. yeah. How you're do you right. in, how do you interpret your performance now? Because it's not about money anymore. Because if you're waiting for money right now, there's no money. Mm. Who's got money? Who's going to pay a thousand pounds for somebody to come out and do a stream? Mm. Nobody ain't got that dough, have they? So now it's what's going on? funny you say that now. Now I'm starting to think, yeah, man, it, there's a few people that are being quiet. Very, very quiet. And a lot of them and a lot of the... And I'm, you know what? That's their team. Mm. Me personally, I've always been this type of person where like me and Boomer, we just like to create. Mm -hmm. We've been busy formulating on many, many, many levels. Mm. Many, many <clears throat> levels. He's, he's a 30-year he's a mm. veteran in the youth service. Mm. And I have natural skills that he's looked at me and gone, Navi, you do these things mm. effortlessly. Mm. Can we formulate this? And I've gone, you know what, Don? You can do this effortlessly. Let's formulate that. Mm. So we've got all these different things. That Formula we couldn't, Voltron. We couldn't even do that. While, while things was the way how they was because we were so governed by the way me personally for the last two three years before this i was literally out on the road every weekend running around doing the thing earning my money at the weekend doing parties and then monday i'd be in my yard till monday tuesday wednesday would be literally hmm. recovering to go yeah, back yeah. out the next weekend yeah 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 so, and whilst he was doing that i was working in felton prison um you know delivering youth services to you know some of the most at risk most vulnerable traumatized young people in the country um, and that that was what all my time was taken upon. Mm. But must have burnt you out. That must have just been a lot of effort, a lot of energy. Well, it's, we were both of us. That, we were, we were, that, we were. You know that that two and a half years of working in Feltham, I've I've been working with young people now for I think this is what my twenty ninth year or something like that. Mm. Um, I started in nineteen ninety two. So whatever whatever that brings us to now, that's when I started doing youth work. And the two and a half years that I spent working in Feltham were the most it was the most challenging. Mm two and a half years working with young people ever. Like, it was, that was a very difficult environment to work I in. I bet. Um, but, Navi was saying to me, like, you don't need to put yourself through that. You don't need to do that. You can step out of that mm. and create your own thing mm. and do your own thing. Yeah. And, and I was like, yeah, I know. And I was thinking, I'm, I'm in and I'm are in and I'm, yeah, I know I could do it, but, I'm, but you know, but this is, this is, this is, I'm going to bring it back to the COVID scenario now. Mm. This is what we do to, to ourselves. We tell ourselves that we have stability in something. Mm. And so we stay in it. Mm. We st so I stayed in my job, even though there were issues and there were things and it was difficult and whatever, you know, and, you know, I've got good reasons for staying in there, like the young people and wanting mm. to help them and all that and my team. And huge, huge, I've yeah. got lots of reasons to stay but I had also lots of reasons to leave. Mm. But I didn't because it was stability. It was my, my, my at the end of the month, I'm getting paid. Mm. I've got that. I can look after my kids. All I can pay that. these bills. I can do all of these things. I've got stability. So I told myself, mm. right? Now, I had to leave my job because of COVID and scenarios and things that were happening that I didn't agree with. I had to end up leaving my job. Mm. Um, so I could have stayed and I could have suffered and not, yeah, and but, not enjoyed it. Yeah. But, but one of the one of the important things I want to get across to people is is we all have a choice, mm. and nothing is stable. Two things: we always have a choice, and nothing is stable. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, well. We there is one thing that's stable. 
is wanting the stable. You. Exactly. You. <laughs> this you. is your stability. You. The inner, the inner core of yourself is your stability. You are stable. Yeah. So, so, so you have control of your life and you create your own narrative. Mm. You can create your own narrative. So that's what we're doing right now. That's so sick. We're creating our own narrative. Uh, you know, set up this, this training, set up this youth work service. Mm. You know, me and Navi, we've set this up um, and we've set up our record label. And we now... Give that shout, give that shout, give that shout. ODT, man, on this thing music has yeah. been in existence for 10 years, Come actually. On. This year is yeah. 10 years since it's been in existence. Yeah. And when I first started it off, I actually hollered at Boomer. I was like, yo, you need to come in. And he couldn't at the time. But, it, you know, five years ago, we ended up linking together. And, I, and as Boomer said, like, we, you know, I've been saying to him, like, bro, you know, you know we can just set mm. up our own thing. Before all of this happened, we were already moving into our live act, which is First Among Equals. That's yeah. another thing. It's a live, live Jeez, band. Jeez, man. It's like, yeah, we literally got... just before COVID hit, yeah, we, had, we were going to do an event in Camden. 20th of March, 2020. <laughs> we were going to do our launch party our, for our live act, First Among Equals. Everything was set up. That was the weekend that the COVID, COVID lockdown, hit. the first COVID mm. lockdown happened. That was the, that yep. on that weekend. Yeah, <laughs> telling on, you. On that weekend. <laughs> So, but, you know, in, in between all of that time, yeah. you know, it's the same thing with like doing the fitness. You know, I'm, I'm a qualified level three fitness instructor. I'm also a qualified fight club instructor. You know, Troy and Hugh and a lot of the guys from fight club were like, Navi, why don't you come and do your, you know, come and do the fitness because you're just a natural mm -hmm. lady. And with the fight club team, it's all drum and bass jungle. You're doing boxer size exercises and you spit bars. So it's like, it's perfect. It's perfect. But I never had the time because as Boma said, you're led to believe. You feel, you lead yourself to believe, I need to be doing this, I need That's to be doing that. Thing. Because you've got to pay this, you've got commitments, you've got bills to pay, and you're like, I need to get this going. And when you're going out earning, you yeah. know, a couple of thousand pounds mm. every weekend, or even a thousand pounds, or say four, three to four thousand pounds a month doing yeah. what you love doing, mm. what yeah. are you going to do? Just stop yeah, all of a sudden and be like, I'm going to go and do this. Well, COVID has forced everybody to take a stock of the situation and go, Right, what am I going to yeah. do? Some mm. people have just come to a full stop. They've yeah. sat down, they've crossed, they've folded their arms and they've gone, it's going to come back around, yeah. I'm waiting. I'm going to watch people TV. Have gone, yeah. yeah, what? literally, watch Netflix, eat a bag of crap, yeah. drink alcohol, yeah. and bun a whole heap of weed, yeah. Yeah. put on weight. And I, bro, like literally yeah, in two me. months, it's been a year. And yeah. I told people right at the beginning yeah. and I got resented for it. Yeah, and I, I offended Whoa. people, but I said it from day one. I said, "Mate, this ain't going nowhere from mm. now." I knew. What did Just I say to them, Boma? Yeah. I said straight from the beginning. I said, "Bro, this is done. We need to start formulating some new stuff," and that's exactly yes. what we've been doing. You have to be adaptable, and I don't want and I don't want to belittle COVID and the impact of COVID. Mm. No, because I I I I do recognize this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. It has a real yes. impact. Yeah. Lives have been lost. People are suffering. Um, the NHS are under pressure. Mm. I understand all of mm -hmm. that. But I also recognise that COVID has, has pushed me to grow. Mm, that's right. As well. Yeah. And it's pushed Every me, fucking cloud. That's mm. right. It's pushed me to be adaptable and recognise the power that I have. Yeah. And it's also pushed me towards being my authentic self. Mm. Boom. And yeah. that, for me, is... Authentic a, self. That's everything yep. for me. Because... Being any being anything other than my authentic self is a lie, yeah, and it's a pretense, yeah, and it's foolhardy. Mm. I'm gonna go that far, so you know, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I would urge people to find their authentic self, and I say that because I feel very strongly about this. Everyone in this world has been programmed. Mm -hmm. Every single human it. being has been programmed because we grow up learning things from whoever we are with or mm. around. Yep. And yep. they learned that from somebody and they learned that mm. from somebody and they don't. But is that who you actually really are or is that what you've been told you are? Oh, that's, that, that is such a hard answer. Are you, are you Lee or Killer Killer? Is he mm. Boma? Mm. Am I you know. Steve yeah. or 
Do you understand yeah. me? So yeah. hard, Who are you? Who I'm David Williams. I was, I was named David Williams and I was taught to be David Williams and I was taught these are the norms of society and these are the things that you have to do. But guess what? Look now. Okay. So all these norms of society that we've, that we've been taught for all these years, for the past 49 years, now they're all out the window because guess what? We've got a new norm now and we want you to disregard the things that we taught you before Jeez. and now we want to tell you that you've got to do this now. That Jeez. this is the new norm. That's what they're doing. And you've got to listen to us. So hold on. So... My son and my daughter and the people that are in this era now, they, this is their norm and this is who they're going to be told that they need to be. But is it's that them? Programming. But is that them? Yeah, because now or you're really... seeing things from the face value of what you have been taught before and you're seeing the, the, exactly. the fault lines of what... Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. It's so, deep, man. so check yourself in mm. terms of who am I really? And all the things that I've been taught, do I actually agree with those things? Mm. Do I believe in those things? Or am I just doing them because that's what I saw other people before me do? Mm. Check yourself. Man. All right, so let's come back to the music when we're talking about that because yeah. this is all about music, right? Because we're all music people and you're watching wow. us and we're music people. So music is also formatted and programmed and we are led to believe that to be successful or to be famous is to be successful in music. But is that really what it is? Because now all of the parameters have been redefined because of this virus that's mm. come along. And all of a sudden, there's no more club life. Mm. There's no more entertainment scene. So now it doesn't matter if you were earning a hundred thousand mm. pounds an hour or you was earning 50 quid in a pub. Means nothing anymore. The, the playing field has been leveled. You could be so, Sarah from the corner, Lady Gaga. You're on the same field now, baby. Like, it's six years. Dead. So what really is music business? What really is entertainment? What, it's all being redefined now. So now you are the controller of what it is and what it means to you. You oh, define that. that. Oh, I love that. Right? And this is what we're talking about programming. You can actually now reprogram every single thing you are doing from this moment on if you would only take the step to realize accept find a new approach mm. change up your attitude and apply yourself differently this is literally and you could have and you could have always done it ah. you just need to be brave enough because mm -hmm. you know, that's because mm. that's one thing and I, I you know and I'll say this unreservedly I make music that I love I don't make music to, to serve any master, I have to like it. Mm. I have to love that. If I don't love that product, yeah, then yeah. I'm not doing it. It's not about it's not about the record label and the money and the this and the None that. that. It's what I love to do. It's what I like to do. Do you know what mm. I mean? And if that's gonna hold me back because you gotta fit into this box, sorry, mm. I don't fit into that box. Mm. I, I don't. There is no box for yeah. me. I'm just David Boomer, mm. and I do what I do. You like it or you don't. Because you can smell a dud. When you've done a dud, you know it. You know it ain't uh, you, really. You've, you've recorded it. I don't it. think I've ever done a dud. <laughs> well, I've done I've a always dud. Been, I've always been that person. People have approached me to do things. I'm just like, it's not me, man. I literally had big money mm. on the table. It's, it's just not me. Mm. All the big yeah. songs I've had have been like, if you look up More Fire... If you look at more fire, it was just a, it was just a different tune. It's literally I can remember the first time me and Spider went on stage to perform that track, Delta and we Spider. played the tune, Ooh. and literally the drop came and the whole dance just stopped and they were all standing there like they didn't know what to do. And I was like, "Yo, we love the tune, I'll come again." And I was like, "Yo, this is a brand new song." Mm. This is something brand new. You never hear this before in your life. Listen good. Mm. And then it's the DJ Fresh, you know? Yeah. He started again. And, uh, and it was like, more fire, bugger. And then everybody was like, oh, and it just broke out. And I was like, yeah. But oh. he, and then after that, Andy C took it and championed That's it. That's right. And it became a worldwide hit. But there was never a tune like that before that. And that's Which what I really do. Which is really inconceivable. <laughs> Like because I'm guys, not scared. I'm not scared. You guys were every like you guys were every cornerstone in the progression of British music, you know, and its roots. And it's just hard to conceive. Me at forty two years old, like I, I, I yearn for those moments <laughs> of like maybe they're happening now, but they're not so they're not so impactful. They're so definitive. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like, you, I, I want to be standing there or a participant in the scene when something so transformative happens. And you're just like... I was there. I was think there. it's the it's time everything. right now for something like that. Literally, anybody that's out there that does music or sees themselves as a creator, mm -hmm. it's that time to sit down and that, that tune you've always wanted to make, do it. It's now. Yeah. It's yeah. now because there's For nothing. Us, do it. There's nothing yeah. stopping yeah. you anymore because you don't have to make that tune that's formatted for the dance because if you don't make it with the thing with the, the snare and the little noise and then on the thing with the do 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 it's yeah. not going to pop off in the dance and then you <laughs> <laughs> there's no dance anymore guys just so you know yeah, yeah you're going to yeah. have to make music for different reasons and yeah. it's called definitive genre ch shifting just yeah. new yeah. shit that yeah. is challenges make status what you quality. feel man yeah make I mean, what I'm, moves you you know he's, he's been doing it 31 years i've been doing it 41 years and literally every time my in my my career shifted to another level i always did something that nobody else had done fearlessly then, yeah because and then people were just like at first they were go they will go like no 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 i'm not playing it but somebody would mm. always be like you know what, I'm feeling that. And it would always be a mm. name brand, somebody would just cotton onto it and go, no, 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 mm -hmm. you, you got something here, Navi. Mm -hmm. And they'd just go with it and, and it bam, it just, you know, like when I did Roughneck, it was mm -hmm. like literally transcended everything mm -hmm. that I was doing. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I'm touring America with Lenny Kravitz. Like literally, Do you like. Mean? <laughs> what do you mean? This ain't a basic fucking podcast. This is what we're dealing with here. <laughs> I could tell them stories, bro. Like literally coming back to to what you oh, know. You, got, you know, rest in peace, Tenafly. Oh, oh don't. Oh yes, Tenafly, that, my brother. That man, like yeah. literally, oh. he he did you know um, yes. a tune called B Boy Stance, mm. um, and it went top forty, I think, back in nineteen ninety eight. And I got invited to do a show up in Manchester. Um, at a, I think it was a, um, I think, it, what, the, what the hell was that rave called again? Hacienda? No, it was a GMEX Center. GMEX. I think it was a Fantasia, mm. something like that. Ooh. And they, they invited me up there to come and do this live show. And I literally had no idea. I'd just been told, come up there, Navi. They, they need, they've got a live band that wants a front. Mm. It was the last, the last show that I ever did for Radio 1 in Oxford at some club and it was we were touring and it was the last show I ever did for Radio 1. I was literally leaving Radio 1 because I was one of the, well, I was the, literally the... The regular MC? Yeah, presenter? For nearly two years on yeah. Radio 1 doing one in the jungle. And it was like, we don't want no more MCs no more. We're going to... So Groove Rider and Fabio came in and took over and it was literally on that crossover, that transitional point that I went to go and do this 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 gig. I turned up in the dressing room and it's Tenafly, J-Rock from Blaps Posse, Aston, a couple of breakers, and I can remember being on the stage, and one of the breakers literally kicked the keyboard doing a windmill, we kicked the keyboard, and the keyboard just <laughs> flew. Like, and I'm like, what kind of madness is going on? Like, on this Sign stage. Sign me up, I'm here, I'm staying. <laughs> Remembering, like, I don't even know this music, it's all breaky, and I'm just up there on the mic, you know, you know, he's like, right, they got the style E, who put the mic, it's the Navi. But I don't even know what the hell I was doing, I was just like, hyping up the crowd, and when I came off the stage, and and this guy, this like the record company guy just came on, he's like, he was like, oh my God, oh my God, that was amazing. He was like, and I'm looking at him like, bro, I don't even, what, what I don't happened? even know what I did. What the hell just <laughs> happened? And he was like, come and see me Monday. He's come down thing. to the record shop. And I went down to the record company, down, literally down the corner from here. Like yeah. literally around the corner from here. No, Virgin, the one down No, there? it was, um, uh, uh, Kensal Rise, Kensal, Kensal oh, Road, Road, yeah, Kensal um, Road, just up there by the little roundabout where, where yeah, Sainsbury's yeah, is. And yeah. then there's a little kind of an estate. That's, that's right. Where the estate ran it. That's where the record label was, Frescanova. Went down Jeez. there. That's how, that's how yeah. ill it is, yeah? yeah. You see, to see the synchronicity. And he said to me, like, listen, mate, you know what I mean? We've got like 50 dates. We've got this, that going on. We've got this flipping thing. <laughs> I've got a dealer on the table. We've got to pay X amount of show. And that was literally it, mate. I'd like, I was gone for three years. I was like, literally, I didn't even do... I, Drum and bass producers and wanted to work with me. The jungle wanted to... This agent didn't have time. Wanted to, but I couldn't even, they couldn't <laughs> even book me. I was gone. I was gone from that point there. I made a rough neck, same thing. Went in the studio, yeah. voiced the track. I was like, oh, I don't know. And then the guy from the record <laughs> company, same guy that signed me, came in and was like, no, that's it, that's the next single. Bam, rough neck. 
and it literally blew worldwide. And like when you're doing these type of things where you're like fearlessly just <laughs> following your, you know, being your authentic self, as, as, yeah. as Boomer yeah. says, and just letting go because you're so programmed. Yeah. To think, I'm a jungle MC. I'm a jungle MC. No, I'm not I'm a jungle not. MC. I'm navigator. Which goes back to this, this scenario we're in. Um, you guys, uh, um, Sweet Yari. Oh, sweetie, sweet, sweet. Oh, sweetie, salute, sweetie, sweetie. Sweetie. my brother, sweetie. Oh, my, sweetie. my brother. We gotta do a tune, sweetie. You know we gotta do a tune. I love the like, I don't even know what to say. We just love you, sweetie. I'm yeah. actually calling him yeah. now. Yeah, Daddy Freddy, Ragged Twins. Yeah, Daddy Freddy. Freddy. All right, Freddy. Daddy Freddy. When Daddy Freddy came to this country in 1985. <laughs> With a big afro out here. Bala, bala, oh, oh, la, bala, yeah. bala. Oh, his flow is just crazy. Killed the thing, yeah, right? He's the originator of, really, he was the first man to do the ragamuffin hip hop thing. But before that, he used to be on a sound called Ute Man Promotion with yes. Sugar Mine Not Sound. And when he came to England, I can remember being in, you, you look, some of the older guys would most probably know that club as Labyrinth, but it was four aces before that where I was in there every Friday. And he came there. And I remember in, I was in the toilet having a slash. And no. There, somewhere in the background, I could hear this guy like, yo, I like what you're DJ. And I turned around, I was looking at him and I didn't quite recognize who he mm. was. And he said to me, what's wrong with you? You're free. He said, well, I'm, you're free of me. I'm so scared of you for what? And he was like, oh, it's like, I like how you DJ. And I swear to God, that guy since 1985, Daddy Freddy, and you know this Freddy, yeah? That's been my brother mm. all these years. Daddy Freddy's you know what I'm saying, brother. right? Since 1985. I know that man 35 years when wow. he just came to this country. And he's like an innovator, man. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they're all, and this, with all due respect to everybody out there that that we've mentioned now, um, it blows my mind that these are walking legends, that they're they're still alive and well, Mm. and Mm. they've Mm. contributed something. We're talking about legacy holders here. Definitely. You know what I mean? Like, that's that is still here. That's crazy. That's amazing. Danny Freddy's a Guinness. Book record yeah. holder. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. <laughs> there, I mean, he's the first guy to come from Jamaica and properly embrace the UK mm. MCs. Like he's literally a UK MC. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, he pretty much did. Born and growing in Jamaica, came but, here when he was, you know, mm, from yeah. south, from that. Mm. But he's literally like embraced the whole UK mm. culture and embraced us as a part of as, it. Yeah, mm. he is it. He's a big part definitely. of it. Definitely. And then you have to talk about General Levy. You have to talk about Tipper Stone Irie. Ridge, man. T- you Tipper. know what I'm saying? You have to talk about Top yeah. Cat. Top you have to talk about oh. Ras Demo. You know, there's Hold so tight many. Hold tight, demo. Oh demo, my god! Demo, like, that's he, salute, doesn't stop. Salute, salute, he doesn't salute. stop working. That guy does not love stop him. working. Oh my god, his voice. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's like it's... there's certain people out there that have, yeah. you know, and there's many of them. You know, we know if we've mm-hmm. not called your name, don't take it personal because yeah. obviously you can only say so many names. No, but there's no, certain no. people out here mm. that are literally the cornerstone. It's funny as well because before us, there was people like Raymond Naptali and Just Screechy. And, and, mm-hmm. and you know, there's mm-hmm. the, the Roy Rankin and yeah. these people who I grew up listening to. That like don't Raymond get their Naptali, flowers. That don't get their flowers. They don't because no. everybody's looking at us as the as the original yeah. veterans, but we're not. We're not. Mm-hmm. There's some guys before us that I learned from, the Festa Sairi, Rualanji, yeah, Raymond Naptali for the North London man, then Roy Rankin, mm-hmm. South London Ooh. man, and you have to start talking about Bikey Jed. You have to start talking about Just Screechy. You have Tell Levi him. Roots, the guy, the the the, the, the yeah. food guy with the, the reggae reggae Tell reggae. Yeah, he's he used a reggae to sing. Them he's a reggae, reggae singer. singer. Reggae singer. I used to go out dance yeah. and listen to them and they sing on sound system and Coxon, right? Yeah. Woo, he Just was before, that deep. Yes, man. Them man, there's a reggae singer from before all of the reggae, yeah. reggae sauce and yeah. all of these cooking books and all of that. See man. what you know now, see? Yeah. Kill Keller real. Podcast always giving it to you, the definitive, <laughs> definitive scriptures. <laughs> you know, so when you start talking about the roots of this thing and you've been around as long as I have, growing up yeah. in London here, when there was nothing, how jungle is now and drum and bass is now and grime and all of that, there was a one thing going on in England and that was a reggae sound systems. Mm. And to me, I find it really disappointing, even though I don't want to be disappointed, but I would say that. I saw Shabba, Shabba Ranks, you know, the original Shabba Ranks. Mm. I saw him say that. One thing that I really miss is that sound system culture where, mm. you know, you have the selector yep. playing the music and yeah. you pull up and you have the DJ, a DJ. That's the because best shit. Because of that, 
that that not being there no more is 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 almost yeah. like sacrilege to the music I industry that. because that's where we come from and it's not there no more. I can remember people booking me for reggae dances. I've gone in there and they literally want me to go in there and just host. I'm like, oh, so no, bro. Turn over the part two and let me pepper the rhythm. Mm, yeah, they ain't come even on. Got the, they ain't even got the instrumentals no more. They've got versions of the vocals mm. on the same rhythms. They, they ain't got the instrumentals no more because that's not how sound system is played anymore. Honestly, and man. I find that sad. I would give it... Like, Jungle is oh. actually the, 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 the modern version... Yeah, the closest thing you the, could... Yeah. To, ...to what that was because we can still MC over the music. But really and truthfully, the other day I was at a little live stream thing with me and Raga Twins and um, Steve Therapy, Big Up Yourself, yeah? And he played um, a Jungle version of... The roughneck read, the roughneck mm-hmm. fashion mm-hmm. rhythm, mm-hmm. tenor fly, you know, which is an old high chaparral or something, yeah, 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 old yeah. western thing, you know. That's totally. And, yeah, right. And and tenor fly used to sing roughneck fashion. They said they rude boy fashion, but bye bye roughneck. And I'm in this dance with oh, Ragga Twins, and man, yo, cold. literally, I just was the devil's advocate that night. I was like, yo, demon. Me a request a lyrics panda reading me. I'm a why yeah, your gasta. He's like, what? And he's like, yeah, your gasta, Kuro Kamani. Elementary. Yo, yeah. And then we start go back into the, you know. Let me say chai son chai. Try to be good. Say chai son chai. Try to be good. Now the meaning of love is misunderstood. Without real love, there can be no brotherhood. So love you one another like you know, you should. And you know, all the flavors start coming back. And then I'm like, yo, Flinty, my wife, me a request a lyrics. My wife, yeah. Oh, your bad so like, oh, your bad so Flinty. Oh, your bad so they're just like yeah yeah no way it's got that because that's what we used to DJ on the mic 30 years ago and they're so programmed into our brains that Mm. we can just do it like off the cuff and you could see the whole people him that was in the in the venue that they were like what (laughs) because they'd never heard that before but it was like that's that's that that energy that I always come back to that's why that's why I always say sound system was the ultimate why can't that be done again it because can. because of the because of the programming, everybody right. th- says now you can't. No, you can't do that. You can, but you can. But you can. <laughs> you fucking can. <laughs> you can. And I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna do it. I'm yeah. gonna do a roll call. Uh, and I'm gonna it, yeah. get. I did it actually in 2015. Yes. I'm gonna release. I've got. I've got five hours of audio from that dance. Oh shit! I had loads of people there, man. There was a couple that, I, that didn't weren't there, but I had. I did. I had top cat and tenor fly. Top cat and tenor fly murdered it. You got it. them on you audio. I've got it audio. I, my, my my birthday party, 2015. Serious. I did a party. It wasn't very well attended, but it was that format again. I had Trevor Sax from Saxon Sound and Gappy Crucial from Cox and Sound selecting for me, and then I had like literally. Matt of Rust oh, Demo, man, do it. Junior Rag- Dangerous, Ragga Twins. Ragga Twins, me, Boom, you was there, Boomer. Of course I yeah, was you there. Yeah, he was there. Mm-hmm. Of course I was there. Um, <laughs> Virgo Dunn, um, Rust Demo. Um, to, the, I tried to get Tip, I didn't, Tip, I didn't come. There's a couple of other, uh, the Sela Collins, you know what I mean? These guys like from Unity days from back yeah, in the day, yeah, but yeah. It, was, it, was, it was epic. It was so epic. But, you know, I'm going to do live it again. Stream. Live stream, you can really fuck people up now. I think I think it needs to be done again because people need to understand what it was and, and how it was. Because that little thing what I did with Ragga Twins the other day was literally mad. Like, it was a little mad 10 minutes mashup and like tune pull up 10 times and crowd was just going yeah. nuts. There were people like literally standing there with their mouth open going like, what the hell is this? You know, what, you know what it is as well? Um, there's a lot you can do with that. You can do a lot with this. When you think about live stream and what it... Yes. You could control... Everything from from the filters in how people are watching it to the you c- recreate the whole scene. You know, like what they do, right? Okay, crass version, saving Private Ryan at the start. You really mm. feel like you're in the war zone. Yes, For real. You can recreate that. Yeah, you can easily in a, in a sound system style, in a sound system fashion. Give it the give it the that quote unquote authenticity mm. that because I think you're right. A lot of in this day and age, especially. People, I, 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 at 42, can't even grasp that environment. I can't even begin to imagine how awesome it is. But if you're watching it on TV... Then you can catch it. Yeah. It's like even this, um, the whole thing with, with what I'm doing right now with merging... It's been done already, obviously, but like merging the fitness with, with, with the music Killed as well. Jungle, yeah. Jungle Jump and Bass. And I did a live stream about three days ago where I have created this... Boxer size routine with the help of Fight Club and a, a guy called Hugh Sharper yeah. Sharp, Sharp, Harper. Big shout hold to tight, hold tight. Salute. Big shout to get to you. Get Troy. Sharper Harper. Come on, Troy. 
you know, Fight Club and um, Jungle Cakes label crew, they asked me, you know, decline, big up, decline, Ed Solo, Ben, oh, day. Jesse G, all of them people there with, you know, yes. all, the, all the Jungle Cakes crew. Jungle and Cakes. they asked me to come and do this um, this workout thing and literally spent two and a half months just, you know, configuring this thing and, and putting it together. And, and then getting up there and doing this boxer size routine to, to jungle drum and bass and like getting it bang on the money and, you know, that, that yo, the energy of that mm. and then getting the response and, and the, the, to that, the reaction was amazing. But what it showed me was it's like, Anything is possible right now, yeah. right now. Any ideas that you have, ideas that you wanted to always bring to life, now is the do time, it. Get man. It. Like there's never been a time like it when you That's could right. do something like this. Be brave, this. be brave. Fortune you know, favors it. It's, it's that. It's literally that time. And if I'm honest with you. That's what keeps me fizzy, man. Mm. That's what keeps me effervescent because I've always got, there's always the potential to do this mad, this mad, like when me and him yeah. get in the, in, in the studio together, it's, ex, it's already exciting before we even start to write the beat because we just like, what we're going to do now is mm. like, you've got this, this blank canvas yeah. and you're going to sculpt, like obviously you're a, you're a graffiti, you're a graph yeah. man and you do, it's like you've got this blank canvas and you're just going to start to just etch yeah. the ting into the ting. You know, I'm a, I'm a jeweler as well. Like, I'm literally going to set up a bench and start to make jewellery because we've got the time Can to do, do it. it. You know, and it don't even think that you're going to spread yourself too thin. Anything you feel like doing when you wake up in the morning, mm. hold your meditation, set your frequency. Do not let what's going on right now define your frequencies. Truth. Right? Speaking literally, truth. you are the controller of your own frequency. What you decide to emit that energy you decide to emit that's your choice like mm. the big man said here you don't need to be defined by what's going on turn the tv off man mm. turn stop the phone listening off. stop listening to what they're trying to tell you to programming you into believing to be scared switch of the notifications something. off you know get some go get some celery and juice that and drink that that's going to energize you that's going to fortify your immune system Go for a walk, a brisk walk. Get some energy, get some oxygen pumping around your body. It's, it's healthy. It actually mm -hmm. helps you to function on a daily, on a daily, you know, stop eating the junk. Let go of the, the alcohol for a minute and literally start to tune into your own frequency. 2021 right here. This is that, these are those. Right mm -hmm. here and now. That's, this is what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it just, it just reminds me of the beginning of the burgeoning jungle scene. It was almost like there's no boundaries anymore. It just, everything just got broken down and there was just this new dawning. Mm. And I used to wake up every day enthused. And that's how I feel right now. I feel like every day I wake up, it's like there's so much potential. Real talk. There's so much potential because you can have a look at it that like that or you can say, oh my God, you know, we've got to go and take the thing and the thing's going to come and get me. And <laughs> let me put my mask on. I've got to be scared. I've got to be because you're being told to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to belittle what's going on. I'm not trying to say that people aren't getting sick and everything, but you don't need to feed into it because the fear factor is, what's is keeping, actually yeah. the thing that starts to reduce your, your whole resistance to catching whatever this thing is that's out there. Mm. Stress is the thing that stress lowers your immune. Thing. Thousand percent. Everybody will tell you that stress, who knows about these frequencies, yeah. that they will tell you that stress will kill you faster than a bullet. All so day. just let go of the stress thing and try to tune into, well, not even try, I don't even like that word. Nah, do it. Do it. Hmm? Do, do it. your best we to wake up with a positive mentality, hold a meditation yeah. and and... And literally emit that frequency for the whole day. Mm. Tune into that frequency for the whole day. And don't let nothing get in the way of no. that. We're living, in, we're living in very uncertain times right now. Nobody can argue with that. Mm -hmm. It's really, un nobody even knows like, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen now? What's going to be the next decision made? And how, how is that going to impact on us? Mm. So it's very uncertain. But guess what? It's always been uncertain. Mm. But now, now it's always been uncertain. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that now it's more intense and it's more in your face. It's more apparent. It's more apparent. But it's always been mm. that. So guess what? You have to be adaptable. Mm. You have to be, take control of the situation. I'm not saying to ignore it. Don't ignore it. But take control of it. Don't just be force fed stuff and, oh, and get panicked. 
mm. recognise that the rug could have been pulled from under your feet any time, yeah. at, at any minute. And regardless of whether the rug pulled from under your feet or not, you have to balance yourself and deal with it. Yeah. And that's what it boils down to. Mm. Yeah, it's not good, it's great, it's all up in the air. But guess what? I haven't had a job since the middle of April. Mm. I've had no job. And... No stable income. No, st no stable income, no stability. Neither is he. Mm. Do we look unhealthy? Do we look like we're hungry or... <laughs> like, it's in, it, you know, your mind is a very powerful thing. So if you tell yourself, oh my God, oh my God, this is, oh my, my world has ended. I haven't got a job. I, I can't pay my bills. Then yeah, then you're going to become ill and yeah. you're not going to do well. Yeah. But if you tell yourself, right, okay, these are all of these things that are wrong. But guess what? Here's these things that are right. Mm. Let me look at the positives yeah. and let me look Glad at how I'm going to set myself up mm. and what I'm going to do and what I'm going to do next. Yeah. Then you're going to be all right. Yeah. I think we're at a, right. we're at a, we kind of got an advantage as when we met up outside at the car and we were walking in, mm -hmm. you know, Keller looked at me, he's like, you all right, Navi? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you all right? He's like, yeah. The other boom, like, you all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why we're, we're kind of at an advantage is because of what we said, I think, when we kind of first started the interview, which is when you're involved in the music industry, is not seen as a stable thing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in, in how many years between us here, there's got to be about 50, 60, 70 mm -hmm. years of experience mm -hmm. here between the three of us. You go through ups and downs. It's well, an undulating it. journey. We yep. chose this. Yep. We chose to do music for our life. It's something that we chose to do. And it wasn't stable because the stability was we knew we were talented mm. and we knew that there was potential for us to go out there and, mm. and make something of ourselves and maybe earn some money to be able to sustain ourselves. But we also Facts. knew that people were looking at us and thinking, you're nuts. I was always told, why don't you go to university? You're a very intelligent, bright guy. Go to university, go and get a qualification, all of this. Well, you know what? I've got so many qualifications, mm -hmm. I can't count them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, I've had so many number what difference ones, does it I make? can't count yeah. them. Different. It's not made That's any the difference to difference me. I've now? been working in all these different fields. It's not made any difference to me, right? What has made a difference is that I know that at any minute, the carpet could have been pulled underneath, from underneath my foot, and it was, and it has been many, many times. Truth. Yeah? yeah. I've been in jail for two years after being from the heights of what I was in, straight down to the bottom and ended up in jail for two years and come out of jail with nothing. Lost houses, nice cars, the whole shebang, money like mad. Like literally hundreds of thousands of pounds. Did it stop me from doing what I do? Did I think, oh my God, woe is me and turn into a crackhead? No, I didn't. I got up, brushed myself off, looked in the mirror and said, what are you going to do now? Mm. And I got on with the get on. And this is where we're at right now. And I've done this many, many, many times in my life. And I'm not saying that everybody can do this, but if you look at what it actually is you're going through, face reality, stop denying what's really going on and make a decision to say, right, this is what's happened. I'm not going to focus on what's happened because it's already passed. I want to move forward. Mm. So now I'm looking at solution and I'm looking at the next phase of me the next furtherment of me, the next expansion of who I am to go to the next level. This is where everybody's at right now. So we are at a bit of an advantage because of living the lives that we've lived. Mm. So we can speak from that experience, which is a beautiful thing. For the people right? that are listening right now and watching, I think there's a, a number of people that are wanting to hear this from a point of view of people that are often regarded as being worse off. As artists, like you were saying earlier, you know, actually, music's always been consistent in everybody's life. Yeah. Actually, it's always been uncertain for anybody making music. Yes. So we're actually, we're proof. Yeah. So rather than considering us as the downtrodden, the they would rather shut us off and go and get a new job kind of people, we're actually more... We're the... We're, 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 we're arguably in an advantageous yes. position. there you go. Arguably. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at what you're doing right now, killer. <laughs> Out of the blue. I ain't spoken to this man for the longest, right? All of a sudden, I get a call. Yo, Navi. As a matter of fact, he called me a few months ago, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And then we lost contact together, yeah. and he's called me. Navi, you need to calm down. We need to have a chat. And I come here, 
And this guy's got cameras all over the place. He's got computers. <laughs> he's like, I'm doing this. He's showing me apps. He's like, look at him. I did the thing. And I'm like, what the blood? Are you really? <laughs> he's like, yeah. And then we're like, yeah, we're doing this. And he's like, really? Yeah, and I couldn't you know, believe it. Because this is, this yeah. is what we've done all Creatives. of our lives. So, yeah, creatives. You know, I know, I know that it's not easy right now for many people. And I know that you, there's going to be people out here sitting here talking like, ah, shut up. You're not just blah, 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 blah. Fine. <laughs> Fine, you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah, of course. But me personally, and I know Buma and I can speak for Keller, mm -hmm. we're not on that. We're not going to be defined or dictated to by this thing mm -hmm. that's happening because I've been doing my thing. I've been around people that have actually got sick from COVID and have been testing positive and I've been in close proximity to them and I ain't caught it. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm -hmm. I have not caught it. And I'm not saying that's because I've you know, and like, no, it's not going to get me. I'm literally not on that frequency. I'm not scared of it, even though I know it's there. And I'm making sure that I put the right nutrition into my body. I'm keeping a positive mind state and I'm doing something physical to keep oxygen flushing mm -hmm. around my body to flush out whatever little things and little skirmishes mm -hmm. and little things are trying to get in. It's got to go. So there's a lot of people out here that are going to most probably listen to this podcast and think, wow, that's inspirational. There's a lot of people out here that are going to listen to it and think, what the hell Something are they else, talking yeah. about? Oh, my mum died. Da, 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 da. You know what? I know people that have died too. But I'm still not going to tune into that frequency and allow myself to go down into the abyss of dark despair because it's being, we're being dictated to to feel that energy. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mm. on that. You know, like I want to be... Fizzy like a bottle of Lucas, eh? Mm. The one in the glass bottle, not the plastic bottle. <laughs> the one in the glass bottle that you used to get From back the in the day when, you know, when the people used to be in hospital mm. used to bring the banana the and big, the grape. The big bollock size as well, not the little ones. We're talking about the... Yeah. With, with, the, with, with, the orange, with the orange film. Cellophane. With the cellophane. With the orange cellophane <laughs> screwed around at the top. And you look through it when you were a kid. You look yeah. through it like a glass. Used to get a 5p <laughs> refund on the bottle. You that, should get me that one there. Milk yeah. crate site. Do you have in the milk <laughs> crates as well with the Coronas <laughs> yeah. cat lemonade? And yeah, that. man. That vibe there. Wow. But you know, it's mm. been it's been literally this has been one of those interviews that, yo. <laughs> that I'm, I'm like, yo, seriously, I mean we've covered a lot. Yeah. We've covered perfect. a lot. And I and I really do, like Boomer said in the first instance, man, thank you very much for Thank you. For having us, Thank you know, you, boys. to come down. Nah, you boys pleasure, are just man. respect. Professionals to the end. Uh, you know. Yeah. The doors always open. Teas in the pot, drinks in the fridge, always. Thank yeah, you. so we say, no bada combo, tia, with the chatty chatty mode. No, Some people yeah. chat too much, you have to chat them all out. No combo, no tia, no, no reach round, ya, and no forever in pharma. We are like that Killer Killer podcast, Navigator, Bullwood Side. Killer Cow, of course. Keep on serving, keep on sharing, sharing is caring. Do not sleep, kids are repeat. Do not sleep on this repeat. We're out like it was out of fashion. You stay lucky, all right? Peace. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> Flipping heck.